In this video I'll show you how to make some simple stone walls just made out of scrap foam that you can use in your miniature games. So, stay tuned. Hello, I'm Craig from bizbox.co.uk. So in this video I'm going to make some stone walls. These are very simple to make and I'm just using the scrap foam that was left over from my Fallout Vault Door video which um, came out about a month ago. Um, the idea from these came from a video from the Terrain Tutor that he did um, Donkey's Ages ago. Um, he didn't show a full tutorial, but um, he did show a process of making these, and I thought that's a really cool idea. So um, credit goes to him, really, but I thought I'd do a beginning to end tutorial on making these walls as they're very simple. And if you're new to using blue foam, like I am, and new to making terrain, then um, this could be a good tutorial for you. Before we begin, if you are new to this channel, then Please do feel free to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with more videos such as ones like this and um, we do battle reports, paint tutorials and all sorts and um, you can hit that bell icon if you want to keep up to date and not miss anything. So let's get straight into it. Okay so I picked up this um, hot wire table saw just off eBay and it wasn't very expensive and as you can see I've got a scrap piece of foam here which is large enough for me to get a few pieces out of. I'm hoping to get to get about three pieces out of this. So, as I plug the hot wire cutter in, I've set the mitre on it so to the um, thickness that I want the wall. And I'm just basically just going to begin by um, putting it through the hot wire cutter. And that will just cut me off several pieces of the width that I want. Now, I'm going to cut as many pieces as I can out of this. And hopefully we'll have a few pieces that are good enough to use for the wall. So I'm just going through fairly slowly here. And I'll give you a smoother cut. So yeah, the um, trick with these is not to go too fast. If you go too fast you get a bit more of a jagged edge. I and mean, it's not a massive deal. But, you know, and the smoother you can get it, the easier the next few steps will be. So I'm just going to run this through a few times, being slowly. Um, I apologise it's not the best angle at the moment. I, I think I do change the angle up later on in this video, but just doing a few passes just to show you. I mean, as you can see there, it's a nice smooth um, surface that we can work from, and then we can just chop these little bits up into the shapes we need. So after a while, I've got three pieces here that I think are suitable to use. And as I'm pointing out there, we really need to sort of chop them to the height. Now I've got a miniature here, and I'm going to readjust my miter gauge um, so I get a good height. Now I'm using the miniature, and that gives me um, an idea of how tall these walls will be. So um, you can do your walls any height that you so wish, of course. Um, using the miniature will just let me know roughly um, how high these walls will be um, if I want a block line of sight or if I want them just to provide a little bit of cover. So what I'm going for about here on this miniature is just mainly up to maybe sort of his belly area. And then um, once that's cut and I actually <laughs> realise what way to put the foam in, I can then cut all these down and then it'll be the same height. Because obviously I've set that on the mitre, so I'll take each piece and I'll just run them through. Like so, just careful to watch your fingers, it gets a bit fiddly once the pieces get a bit smaller. And again, just going slow, just to make sure you get a nice um, smoother edge. Although it's not too much of a deal um, here, especially with the um, top edge. And here, um, just change the angle, just so it's a little bit better. And then you guys can see, just a bit easier, just running through a piece like that. And I'm using these um, table saws makes it a lot quicker. You can see like the top a little bit wonky there, the bottom was wonky, that might have been from the scrap piece, but that's not a massive issue. And then lastly I just run through the third piece. So with all three pieces now the height that we want, and um, it's just a case of um, neatening up the edges. 
So I start off originally just using the table saw to do this. Now with the edges a little bit a little bit of a weird angle, um yeah it's a bit of a pain to do. You can do it, but trying to get them straight, obviously you can't really go against the miter gauge very well, but I persevere and I try it with one. Um but I soon realise that um there is a quicker way of doing this. So a little flick of the finger and I have the light bulb moment and that's to get my handheld um hot wire cutter. And you know, we can really quickly just chop these edges off. Now you don't have to be dead straight on this. Not really. But um be as straight as you can. I'm just using the hot wire, you can see I just go straight through them. You can always neaten these up if need be. I'm trying to show you guys on camera makes it a little bit more difficult to get as straight as I'd like. But I can I neaten that up off camera, no problem. And you know, as quick as that, we have the shapes of the stone walls that we want. So the next thing to do, now that we've got the three pieces of the stone wall, um, is to make them um get take the top and make it sort of um uh, sort of uneven and we're sort of going for like a wavy sort of thing here and it'll make sense once um I've done it but these are just to represent like the stones on top being piled up at different heights um rather than just all being flat on top. If you think about these really old style stone walls they don't always um be completely flat at the top. So where the stones have just been stacked randomly and that's sort of what we're going for here. So just using the hot wire cutter, I'm just doing this little sort of wavy pattern on there. And once we start putting the stones in, um, th that will make a lot more sense. So again, I'm just going on the next one here, just showing you how quickly you can do this. Um, you don't have to be neat, you want it to be as random as you can to give it a more natural look. So don't try and get all these the same length and height or anything. You can just go wild with it. They haven't even got to be that smooth or anything, you can just fix all that later on if you so wish. And with that we have three of them done. You can see, because um, I'm using the three small pieces here, they're quite modular. I can have like, a little corner piece, or I can have a little bit like that, so... And just getting the miniature back out to show you sort of the height that we've got. So it provides, they provide a little bit of cover, and at the end of the video I'll show you them. Um, with some more miniatures. So the next up, the next step, sorry, is to add the stonework, and we're going to grab a pencil here, and we're basically going to start engraving the stones in. So I'm just doing random little um, circles or ovals, semicircles here and there. As you can see, starting from the top, a couple of sort of semicircles. And again, you just want this to be random, so you don't want them all to be the same size or shape. You just want lots of random little circles. And if you put some in random areas as well and work from them, this is a tip, another tip that I got from the Terrain Tutors video. Um, you'll find that that'll give you an even more sort of random look. So this step is quite tedious, and when you do it on all of them for both sides as well, it will take a little bit of time, but just persevere with it. And um, the, the effect will certainly be worth it. And just like that, we have one piece with all our stone work. And now it's really starting to look more like a stone wall and not just a bit of blue foam. So the next thing to do is grab an old stone. Or you can use a scrunched up bit of tin foil here. Um, I know a lot of terrain makers like that method as well. But we're just roughing up the edges. This will give you more of a rounded edge which will look a bit more natural, and you can even press it onto the actual surface of the stones as well. Give them a little bit more texture. So this is just a stone that I just found in the garden as well, so you don't need anything too fancy here. And with that we can um, begin to paint, paint it. So I have a little mix here. This is a mixture of um, some Mod Podge, a little bit of water, and a black acrylic paint. I'm just using a black acrylic craft paint. You don't need to use your 
um, expensive GW paints or anything here. And I'm just painting it all over the piece and making sure I get all this into all the cracks. So this is like a very dark grey at this stage, but um, yeah, any colour you so wish really for your walls, you can paint them. But black does give us a good surface, and using that Mod Podge as well helps seals the foam. So next up, I've added a little bit of white into the mix, and this will give us our base grey colour. And I'm painting it all over the stones. I'm doing like a heavy overbrush here because I want to leave the black or the dark grey in the recessed areas. You can, of course, just paint this over and do a black wash um, to get the same sort of effect. As you can see, it's a very heavy sort of dry brush or an overbrush. And after a couple of coats, we have this nice grey colour for our stones. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some Zandri dust. And I'm just going to paint a few random stones. This is just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, you don't have to do this, but I've seen other guys do this before um, for like dungeon um, scenery and stuff like that. Um, if you're familiar with a lot of the D&D um, &D stuff, you might have seen stonework like this before. Um, if you haven't, do check out some um, D and D crafting channels on YouTube. Um, they do some really good terrain stuff. So yeah, just picking out random ones. Only about six or seven on each side. Um, you don't need too many. I think I do about eight on this one, maybe nine. But um, yeah, try and keep it to maybe less than ten. I think it's a good rule of thumb. Depending on how many stones you have, of course. But you can sort of eyeball it. As you can see, it looks. Um, it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. So next, I'm going to take some long beard grey, and this is for a just a dry brush over the top. So this is sort of to highlight all the stones, and for both coloured stones as well, it provides quite a nice highlight. So just take them a dry brush and just go and over. It might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but and um, once it's done, it does add a nice little highlight to these walls. And once this step is done, um, the walls are complete. And here are the finished wall pieces. As you can see, um, you could um, like make the stones or match between each one um, a bit better than I did, but it shows you sort of variation in different stone sizes and how they look, and you can see I've got some hand gunners hiding behind the wall and the wall's quite a good height for them now of course um, being small pieces they're more modular so you could have a long piece like that you could have them enclosed um, like that so just having these smaller pieces means um, you have a lot of variety you can do and I've made a couple larger ones over here so more line of sight block and we get down level Let's see how many inches hides behind down I'm going to make some more larger walls and more smaller walls um, as you've seen from this video they're very quick and easy to do so I hope you guys have found this useful and um, yeah if you um, have built any of yourself from this tutorial then please um, do let me know and let me know how you got on and how easy you found it or if you have any tips how to improve them then do share as well um, thinking I might make some like end posts as well which could look quite cool because um, like once you've got your long wall there it would be nice just to have something just on each end I think that'd be quite cool so yeah that is the walls so I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you again very soon if you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already you can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.